Thank you. It's good to have the Lord with us. Greater is the one who's with us than the one who's in the world. And this day we are thankful that we can be gathered freely in the presence of God in this holy space. I'm glad that you all got the memo that the service changed to 10 o'clock. It's uh, what gonna change again soon when we have daylight savings time change that it will still be um, 10 o'clock, but the clock will change. So um, just be alert to those things in these coming days. This coming Wednesday, we will have um, a special service outdoor. Our Wednesday evening service at 645 will be in the pavilion area and we'll have blessing of the animals. And so um, you can bring your pets if you dare. Um, and we will have a blessing of the animals and gather there. One hour before that time begins, we will have the distribution of communion um, park in the parking lot. So for those who have been worshiping at home and would like to receive communion but are um, being very careful because of COVID, you can come at that time and we will serve you in your car and then um, receive that together and send you on your way. And then at 6.45 we'll begin that service of blessing of the animals. That service, blessing of the animals, we will be um, broadcasting over Zoom. The sound might not be quite the same because we're gonna be outside with all of the cars and, and wind and with a different sound system than what we have in here. But we'll worship. The crop walk will be held next Sunday, October 10th. Our registration begins at 1.30 p.m. And there's some information about that. Um, Rianne, did you want to say anything more about that? Uh, I can still collect money up through next Sunday morning. Can collect money up through next Sunday morning. And do we have on the table back here some items that people have brought? Yes. And that's for... Yes, we're having a fundraiser for Habitat for Humanity on November 4th at 1812 Brewery. Um, Allegheny College Culinary Program is providing the food, and Ken Nolan is providing acoustic music. Um, tickets are $25. I don't have tickets yet, but I will very soon. And we are collecting items in the back for baskets that we're either, I mean, we're not sure yet whether we're going to do a raffle or a silent auction, but there are different themes. Um, there's a kitchen basket, that you can do holiday baskets, you can do a family game night basket. Um, wine lovers, I'm trying to think, hot beverages. Um, and you don't have to do the whole basket. I see some people have actually done the whole basket, which is wonderful. But if you want to just bring an item or two, um, Charlotte, Louie, and I will be getting together that week and putting together baskets. So we'd appreciate that. And the Quilters, uh, Schoolhouse Quilters Guild has donated three lap quilts to us for the raffle. So we are really excited about that. Thank you. Oh. And one more thing, there is a homeowners meeting this coming Thursday, October 5th, I believe that is? 7th. 7th. I got my dates mixed up. Yeah. Um, at LaVille Baptist Church outside in the pavilion. So if you know of anybody who you think might qualify for habitat housing, we would love to meet with them and help them with the paperwork. So the Habitat for Humanity, the uh, fundraiser, is our, this year, how we are participating in God's work, our hands, um, all across the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. At the beginning of September, we have events that just simply are an expression of our work in the community. So uh, for this congregation, we are participating through support of the homeless. We want to keep in prayer um, so many different things and people on our prayer list I want to keep sharing the God, we bring these things to the altar for healing. Um, Jesus says, cast all your cares on me for I care for you. Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. So we're in the presence of our good shepherd this day, receiving life and taking that hope out to the world. I think we'll have our prelude. Did you have another announcement?
Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> See what love our Creator has given us. We are called God's own children. Beloved, we are God's children right now, and? What we will be has not yet been revealed. Let your love grow in us, loving God. That we might grow into your likeness. We have lots of questions and known knowns in life. This greeting comes from 1 John. It says, we don't know what we'll be like, but we know this, we'll be like him, for we shall see him as he is face to face. And all who have this hope purify themselves in Christ Jesus. We are transformed and raised and empowered by this hope. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter. Like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. sculptor of the mountains, God the miller of the sand, God the jeweler of the heavens, God the potter of the land, you shape us now God the nuisance to the Pharaoh God the cleaver of the sea God the pillar of the darkness God the beacon of the free you Sightless lead us now. God, the dresser of the vineyard. God, the planter of the wheat. God, the weeper of the harvest. God, the source of all we you are host at every table. We are hungry, feed us now. <clears throat> God, the unexpected infant. God, the calm, determined youth. God, the table-turning prophet. God, the resurrected truth. You are present every moment. We are certain. 
marching, meet us now. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast. Teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Job, the first and second chapters. There was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his ingenuity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he is in your power. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd, with which to scrape himself, and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Word of God, word of life. I'm constantly amazed at how the word of God speaks to us. Who would have thought to assign Job to a week like this? And Job, who loses children and wealth and health, says, when my flesh has thus wasted away, then I know my Redeemer will be still standing in the end. And the Redeemer has the last word, and it does in the book of Job where there's healing. So our Redeemer still stands. Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. 
I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood. Whose hands are full of evil plots and their right hands full of bribes. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. I take my stand on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. The second reading is from Hebrews, the first and second chapters. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint, God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? or mortals, that you care for them. You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. <coughs> Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Some Pharisees came and to test him, they asked Jesus, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, what did Moses command you? 
And they said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. The disciples spoke sternly to the children. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me, do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Jesus, many times when he was asked the question, turned the question around and responded to a question with another question. He wanted to get people thinking about what they've been asking. What does Moses command you? Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce, a dismissal for her. And Jesus' response is, it's because of your hardness of heart he wrote this commandment for you. You know, they, they come to Jesus with a question they put in legalistic terms. Is it lawful? Is it lawful? Is it legal for someone to divorce his wife? And I think that in uh, language, in those things, we end up dehumanizing and we begin to make things mechanical that are caught up in a whole lot of pain. Because in the question that they bring to Jesus, they don't come to him and say, two people are hurt and divorced. They, they miss out on that event. Maybe it's implied, but I don't hear that when they say, is this legal or not? And sometimes we fight over what's legal. Should, abor- should, should abortion be legal or not? And we lose sight of the humanity in the argument, even though we think we're arguing about the humanity. But the very argument itself, being put in legal terms, becomes something mechanical, something imposed, something... And Jesus then steps back and helps us refocus and talks about the brokenness in relationships. He recasts things. I got to meet, I was delighted, for the first time in text study with the new vicar at St. John's, Heather Hill. And you'll get an opportunity to hear her preach and to get to know her a little bit. She'll be primarily at St. John's. But today, this morning, is her first day there and Heather we lift you up to God and the people of St. John's we lift you up this morning as you are encountering and meeting each other and hearing and worshiping together for the first time there and meeting with Heather we are saying you know hardness of you know it's what Jesus says it's because of the hardness of your heart that he wrote this command I said what does hardness of heart mean And Heather says, it's when you lose the ability to love. And I love that definition of hardness of heart. And think about the times that that, um, says God hardened Pharaoh's heart and Pharaoh, and in all these circumstances, you know, when we we think of tyrants and, and oppression and all these different circumstances, there is this hardening of heart, there is the loss of ability to see people as human beings created in the image of God in our relationships too, in our battles, our disagreements, our fights with people, in our intimate relationships, whether it's with siblings, with children, with parents, with spouses, 
we lose the ability sometimes to love or the capacity to love. And instead of seeing through the eyes of love, we see through the eyes of pain. And there is this defense that comes up, an anger to protect the pain. Sometimes accusations. We hear tragedies and we want to know who's to blame and what's involved in those things. You know, it's, and Jesus returns these things to the human perspective of, of the humanity. He restores the humanity and he, he looks at the, the brokenness in the situation. And Jesus says that the certificate of divorce is what God brings to a situation where the loss of love has taken place. Can um, the PowerPoint be shared? Is that work? Remember, uh, sometime back, we had the story from Genesis. We looked at the creation story. If you click one time. The story of Genesis begins with chaos. Oh, it looked like it froze a little bit. It begins with chaos and it ends with order and beauty and abounding with life. And how do you get from chaos to abundant order, beauty, and life? How do we get from, from the void? You know, in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was void and there was darkness over the face of the earth and it was formless. How do we get to the chaos of a marriage that has been hurt and broken? The void, the absence of the love. How do we get to the place of abundant order and beauty in our lives? And remember the creation story. What happens in that? The first day, God separates light from darkness. The second day, God separates sky from sea. The third day, God separates dry land from sea. God, in the first half of creation, is establishing boundaries, defining boundaries. And then the second half of of creation is parallel. It fills those boundaries with life. On the fourth day, God creates the sun and the moon and stars. On the fifth day, God creates birds and sea creatures. On the sixth day, God creates animals and human beings. And we find that these things fill. Click one more time, Kathy. Click. We find out that the sun fills the light, the moon and stars fill the darkness, the birds fill the sky, the sea creatures fill the sea, the animals and humans fill the dry land. That there is this establishing these boundaries and the boundaries are filled with life. And then in the creation story, we have the naming of all these things and the blessing of it. And I think in the story, when Jesus confronts divorce, they come to him with a legalistic question and Jesus responds with what I see as a, um, as a creation event. He tells the story here. I mean, he tells about when they're created, the two shall become one flesh. And what God has joined together, let no one separate. You know, I can take two different color pieces of paper and, and, and I've been thinking about this because sometimes this can be used in a cruel way in a legalistic way, because when we turn to legalism, we often turn to cruelty. But I can glue these two together and hand them to you and and ask you to separate them. And it's impossible to separate without ripping. And I think in the text, you know, when Jesus says what God has joined together, let no one separate, it's not like he's suggesting, don't separate it, or he's giving us a command. It's the same kind of language as let there be light. When God says, let there something, it can't happen otherwise. It's, it's, a, it's performative language. And when God makes something one, it's performative language, and it can't be separate. It's not like God says, choose not to. It's that we can't. If we try, we end up ripping it. And what happens with the colored paper is if you try to separate that, you'll end up with pink, and you'll end up with these different colors on that. You'll end up with tearing, and you'll end up with new colors. That's where the, I think the text begins then in a way, is because we bring God that brokenness and God looks at that and says, okay, now how do we make a beautiful picture out of what is torn and broken? How do we take something that now has new colors in it and make something that's beautiful out of that? That in the tearing of relationships, whatever it is, whether it's marriage or between siblings or husband, wife, 
or friendships or in community, that tearing that we have that is so painful in life, we hold up our lives and we see the colors of all these events that have colored us and come into our life and we see the tears and the holes and the fragility of that. And God looks at that and says, okay, now there's more colors to work with. There's more ingredients to work with and we'll make out of this a picture that you couldn't have had otherwise. And so what happens in this creation event is there is a certificate of divorce and the certificate of divorce is a new creation of boundaries. There is a new boundary that makes room for new life to happen. And you know, I've worked with a number of people in domestic violence and their life cannot live well. There is, you know, because of the hardness of heart and the loss of love in this relationship, there is not the ability for a person to live with safety and health and freedom. And so God says in this case then, we have a new boundary to be created and that is the certificate of divorce. That certificate of divorce says you are no longer husband and wife. The abusive partner no longer has the right to walk in the door and command and do whatever he wants. Didn't have the right to in the first place. But it's like changing the keys. It's establishing a boundary around which, okay, there needs to be a new beginning for the life. There needs to be boundaries that will protect and allow life to grow and flourish because God is not interested in legalism that simply just, you know, sentences people to death. The law sentences us to death, but grace comes to bring life. So in this text, that certificate of divorce is brought in because of the hardness of heart, the loss of love in the relationship, and a new boundary is established so that there can be a new love that grows, a new possibility of life that happens. It's not the way God wanted it to happen. God didn't want the brokenness. But God will see the brokenness and say, how can we make a beautiful picture and now there's more colors to work with than there was before? How can we use the things that have come from previous relationships that were painful and how can we use them to become gifts in our life? How can we use those things to become all the more rich? How can those pains be turned into blessings? This story of the human family then becomes the story of of the children And God is watching out for the vulnerable. And in these broken relationships, we are vulnerable and we're hurting and we're weak. And so the child, the children, the disciples, you you know, there was a thought um, that, oh, well, the second part of the passage is easier to relate to and, and talk about than the first, the part about the children. I'm not sure that's true. I think for us, we, we think of children as something, you know, delightful and happy and hopeful, and we'll talk about that, but not about divorce. But there's something really offensive and broken in this text where the children are silenced, the children are pushed away, the children are are dehumanized in the same way that happens in the divorce text. Did you see the other thing that happens in the divorce text? They ask, does does the husband have the right to divorce the wife? And Jesus comes back and says, and the wife has equal responsibilities and equal rights. And he raises the woman up to an equal place with the man that she didn't have in her society. I think that probably shocked them. But she also has responsibilities in that relationship. She also has a part in in the health of that relationship. It's not one way, it's mutual. And in the children, in this text, the voice of the powerless is raised up. And Jesus is indignant when barriers are put up to keeping people from the blessings of God. Jesus is angry about any time that through religion we keep people away from being blessed by God. Let the children come to me and do not stop them. To such as these, the kingdom of heaven of God belongs. Um, Another translation says, to such as these, the reign of God belongs. Do you think of children as reigning? The power given them in that? It is to children that the reign of God belongs. They have this incredible inheritance of reigning in in God's kingdom along with other people. And, And Jesus is seeing the powerless and raising them up in this. So I think that in this day when we are surrounded by brokenness and hardship and things that we can't understand and make sense of, that what we hear in this text is Jesus says, I will come to the brokenness that you have. We'll set new boundaries so that you can be safe and secure. 
and will fill those boundaries with life. The story of Job, that happens. He loses his children, he loses his wealth, he loses his health. And God comes at the end of the story and reestablishes boundaries and there's new life, there's new children, there's new um, blessings that happen. And for all God's children, there is in, we're in God's hands and our story's not finished yet. You know, how do we talk about the brokenness of the world? And I think that's one thing that I, I'm seeking to learn. Um, what is gossip? How would you define gossip? Can you help me? You have thoughts of what gossip means? What's that? Hurtful. It's hurtful. Why is it hurtful? Because it makes a judgment. Makes a judgment. It doesn't have all the facts. It doesn't have all the facts. I, I, I brought to you some prayer requests at the beginning of the service. There are other events I didn't mention to you about the week. And in all these circumstances, we don't have all the facts. Other thoughts about that? You know, um, Jerry's not the only family that lost loved ones to violence this week. When we went with Joyce to tell Drew's brother that he was in, had a brain bleed and he was not expected to, to recover, Drew's brother hadn't heard anything about that and was just receiving this word, you know, and it's hurtful. It hurts. But he said, um, you know, there's so much happening in this world. And one of his neighbors had been killed the night before in an act of violence, a separate from the other events this week. And there are other events that have happened a few weeks ago here. So, I mean, we have these events happening. And divorce, when there's divorce, you know, people talk. And sometimes our prayer time becomes an opportunity for gossip in, in the church. And I think about how do we talk about the brokenness of this world in ways that do not dehumanize. And I, and I think sometimes we want to know all the details about things. You know, the news will immediately jump on stories because they have this hunger and thirst for blood, it seems. But the news is fed by the hunger and thirst of the people who read the news who are thirsting for that too. And so our society is built on this thing that builds divisions, builds dissensions, where, you know, we have news that, you know, the, these talk show um, news pieces are in extremes and are not meeting and things like that, but it seems like there's this thirst for blood in all of that. And as a body of Christ, I think that in, as we're talking about the brokenness in our lives, the brokenness of marriage, the brokenness of relationships between father and children, the losses that we experience, the loss and violence, the things that are hurtful, Many times the things that we don't want to share because the world, it's kind of like what Jesus said, don't throw your pearls before swine because they'll trample on it. You know, these are pearls in our lives that we care for. And so Jesus hears the story of diverse divorce and he hears it in these dehumanizing ways and he reframes it in the ways it talks about the brokenness. That God has made this one and something has been torn apart. There's a tearing here. And there's an opportunity for new boundaries. And the way we talk about those things, I think, should also be opportunities for us to think about the boundaries that we speak in. Do we speak in a way that's life-giving to the people who've gone through those things? Do we speak about the things that happen in our community and in our world in a way that restores dignity to people rather than robs them of dignity? Do we, lacking the facts, make judgments about people, about their abilities, about their social class, about their political views? Do we become like the religious leaders who turn things into legalistic ways that thirst for blood and that lose sight of the brokenness of the earth? And I think Jesus tells us, step back and look at the bonds between people and how can we focus on healing the bonds? How can we focus on coming into where there's a broken marriage and loving, restoring the capacity to love for all the people there, just surrounding with love. Sometimes I have, you know, in, in the counseling and mental health, I had people come in with difficult, difficult contexts, and I think they're going right back to those situations. And what I say is not gonna change their existence. But they have this one hour with me, and it can be an hour which, when they're loved, 
Would they love me? It can be an hour where there's dignity. It can be an hour where there's respect. It can be a time when they could just have the ability to breathe and let down defenses. And how can we make our time of worship be a time that's safe for people to bring pain to the altar, not having to hide things, but a place where we won't be gossiping, but a place where we will love and cherish, protect life and restore life. And I think that's what Jesus wants to get to in this text when he says, let the children come. Don't turn them away. Restore the rights of all people. See people equally. Set boundaries for new creations and protect life to happen. Not because the brokenness is the way that God wanted things to be, but because brokenness is the context God comes to to bring hope and healing. Children of God, We are called to the earth like Esther for such a time as this. We exist as Christ Lutheran Church in the world today because of all of the hurtful things that are happening around us and we are called to be light in this time. We have incredibly amazing calling to be hope in a world that's longing for hope. May God bless you. May God care for you. May God shine his light upon you in the days to come. People of God, we are people of hope. Stand and let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And it begins, I believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord our God, you are holy, 
and you are here. In Revelations, whenever the story turns to the presence of God, all other things cease. The violence ceases, the loss ceases, the cries cease, the hurt ceases, the brokenness, the fear, the uncertainty, the questions, the illness, COVID, all these things fade because your glory overcomes. In this day, we bring our hurts, our pains into your presence. And you are here. And you are holy. And you are healing. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, we love you. And we thank you because we always have hope. Greater is the one who is in us than the one who is in this world. Greater is the hope in us than all the powers of the pandemic. Greater is the hope in us than all the uncertainties when we have. Greater is the hope that we have in us than the economic questions of our times. We are a people of hope because of you and we thank you, O Lord. Open our eyes to see your presence in the world and how that presence changes absolutely everything with the power of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we ask for the leaders of our world that your spirit would pour out among all in positions of power and leadership. We think of those who are in difficult situations, those who are in places of danger and violence trying to care for others, those who are in the intensive care unit right now with Mark and with Drew, those who, O oh Lord, are in our schools trying to care for our children. We care, pray, O oh Lord, for all who are in positions of caring for others, that you will protect them, O oh Lord, that you will guide them, that your spirit would be poured out, that justice would grow, would spread throughout the land with your healing, with your goodness. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we ask for our earth, the planet itself that has been ravaged. We ask, O oh Lord, for cleansing of the earth, for a renewal of life, for balance to be restored, for our destructive powers to be brought back and reigned. May your kingdom come, your reign be done on earth as it is in heaven, a reign of healing for our planet. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we thank you for miracles every day. Thank you for my birthday this week and a reminder that each day is a gift of life, that you give us good gifts. We thank you for the beauty around us and the leaves that are beginning to turn that talk about the changes of the seasons and the beauty that awaits us. O oh Lord, may we be part of these changing seasons in a way that uplifts and holds and sees the beauty alongside, O oh Lord, all else. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we come to you with those who are hurting this day, those who are in need of health, strength, your peace, your care, relief from pain. We ask, O oh Lord, for Gary Llewellyn, Retta Hanlon, Sally Boozer, Mary Lou Rose, Joyce DeMundrun, Sharon Schaefer, Patty Wilson, Connie Otto, Bill Crawford, Lisa and Dave Ahern, Laura Murray, and Jack Murray, Doris Baker, Jack Zeeland, and his brother and daughter, for Jane Dawson, for Linda McCann, for Anna Brook, Sharon McKenzie, for Mary Kiefer, Norm Nightingale, Keith and Naomi Zeiler, Carol Barger, Roxy Sliviak, Arlene Evans, Randy Nathaniel Engel, for Karen King, for Wally Swanson. We lift up David's brother, Roger, and his wife, Sally. We lift up David in his upcoming surgery. For Karen Ford, for Gary Atherholt, for Harry Gillum. We pray, O oh Lord, for the family and loved ones of Brenda Smith, who passed away this week, a classmate of Faye and Waltz. 
We pray for the loved ones of the sheriff's deputy who died of COVID. Lord, in your mercy. Our Lord, we ask your presence in these coming days for Jerry and for his wife, Mitzi, and for their family. We ask that your power and presence would be around Mitzi on Wednesday as she receives this care for her back. We pray, O Lord, that healing would flow through her and that she would get relief from pain. We ask, O Lord, that in the losses they've experienced this week of their son and daughter-in-law, so many questions and confusion that you would come and be with them in ways that we don't even know how to put into words. Protect them, watch over them. O Lord, may life open up in the days to come for them. We want to lift before you Jenna and um, Griffin, the children of, the grandchildren, the children of Brian and Kelly. Amazing, beautiful young adults, and we ask for your care as they've lost their parents. At this time, O oh Lord, we want to lift up Mark, who is in intensive care in Mark's family, as he's struggling with COVID, pneumonia, and was not expected to live even Thursday night, and we're still waiting to hear what's going to happen. So in our times of waiting upon you with things that we can't understand, we ask that your mercy would surround us, hold us, carry us, that your strength would lift us, lift us up, that you would provide our needs as our good shepherd. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up Joyce at this moment as she is with her loved one, her companion in life, as he is um, waiting decisions of family for breathing his last on this earth. We commend him to your care. We commend Joyce to your care. We thank you for her wisdom and strength. We ask that you would sustain her, comfort her, be with her in the family in these coming hours. Oh Lord, thank you that you know all about death, that you speak to the dead and call the dead by name, and the dead answer and rise up. We thank you, O oh Lord, that this happens for all the things that are too great for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear the prayers we answer, uh, we, we bring to you now, silently or loud. Pastor Daniel and Kathy, on times of stress and difficulty, um, we thank them for their dedication to this congregation and bless their ongoing love for, for the people in this family. Linda Davis. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, you already knew about these concerns before we named them. And yet we have the privilege to name them because that's good for us to do. And it increases our communion with you and we thank you, oh Lord, that you hear our prayers. And you answer them better than we can imagine. Now to the one who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all we can ask or imagine. To him be the glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. From where you are standing, spread peace to those around you. Peace, 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 peace. God's peace. God's peace, Gary. For all of you at home, peace from us here. Peace. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold 
you in the palm of his hands. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life, say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. The snare of the fowler will never capture you, and famine will bring you no fear. Under his wings, your refuge, his faithfulness, your shield, and he will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand you need not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day Though thousands fall about you, near you it shall not come. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you palm of his hand. For to his angels he's given a command to guard you in all of your ways. Upon his hands they will bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand, in the palm of his hand. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert, manna to rain down from the heavens, Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. To Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, with the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, full 
of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I love those little voices. He was just saying, in case you didn't understand, Jesus said, let the little children come to me. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me, the body and blood of Christ given for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for and ever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst, come, the table is ready. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, and because of COVID, I will be bringing the cup and the, um, the little packet to you. Uh, I'll place it in your hand. You can just hold your hands like that, and I'll place it in your hand without touching your hands. I have washed my hands with uh, antiseptic, and so we'll do that until our... Um, the high rate that we have of COVID comes down and then we'll be able to come up again to receive. But for now, that's how we'll be doing it. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace, Lamb of God.
wafer is on the bottom, the body of Christ given for you. We receive that together. And now the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. My life flows on in endless song. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I catch the sweet though far off hymn That hails a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing? What shall my joys and comforts die The Lord my Savior liveth what though the darkness gather round songs in the night he giveth no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock i'm clinging since christ is lord of heaven and earth how can i keep from singing the peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm. Well, to that rock I'm clinging. Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? I wanted to let you know um, we're making progress bit by bit. And once again, we're uh, starting to post the services on YouTube. So if you don't get a chance to join us for the services, check out YouTube. Excuse me. One more thing. Kathy and Pastor, could you mosey on up here, please? Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so
So this week it has been the birthday of these two incredible people. And we are, yes, I agree. Last year we had to do a drive-by birthday celebration, if I call, recall correctly. And this year we're blessed to be able to be here in person, and we certainly cannot let their birthdays go by uncelebrated. Now, can we? No. I'm going to, I really want you to sing, but I'll do it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Daniel and Kathy. Just say the last one. Happy birthday to you. And out on, out in the pavilion, there is a party. Oh, wow. A big party going on. Um, there's alcohol and a band. No, just kidding. Come and enjoy cake and some finger foods and be blessed. And if you happen to be visiting today, please come and join us. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I've never received so many cards and gifts and greetings in all my life. It just keeps coming. So thank you, everybody.